Rosalind yeah. Deutsche, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, possibility to have a short talk with you. First, uh, you had an amazing uh, presentation today thank at La Publica because you pull back extremely important points. One that is really a key for neoliberal global capitalism is actually the questions of question of democracy. Yes. Yes. I think this is the point much larger than the public. Yes. And you actually brought this. So can you uh, 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 make a reflection, a short one, why this democracy is so important? What is the connection with the public? That with democracy, there is no longer any uh, absolute source of unity for the people, for the social order. Should I be looking at you? The, um, and therefore, Claude Lefort, who I'm uh, quoting more or less, uh, says that something emerges from that, and what emerges is what he calls the public space, but he means the public sphere. This is, for him, the sphere in which the meaning of the social order is decided. <laughs> but it's decided and put at risk all at one time, because it always can be contested, because, as I said, uncertainty, as he puts it, is the hallmark of um, democracy. So I don't think you can say that they go together. Democracy and the public sphere absolutely go together. And in the neoliberal era, which has been coming for a long time, uh, these, both of them are threatened with the primacy that's given to the marketplace. Yes, and the right? processes of privatization. So democracy is, I mean, sorry, capitalism, in a way, is giving up on democracy. Good, so what now? I completely agree with you, and this I think is one of the most important things, because still it's all the time this question of democracy, democracy. So if this is the case, and you are uh, true, uh, true in your analysis, so what now? What are actually these social that you talk about? How you can define this? What, is, what we have in front of us? I or? think that it's uncertain, first of all. I don't think we know. But I do think that for now, it's a matter of keeping that democracy and the public sphere alive as best we can. And I am not, um, I mean, obviously, I'm not optimistic, but I'm not pessimistic either. Um, because, you know, I don't know, but I think there's a lot of resistance. And the public sphere is part of that. It can be a space of resistance. So um, that's all I can say about what now. I don't know what's going to happen. I think fascism, in some form, is a real possibility. <laughs> and in um, the US, with the election, Trump represents what Christopher Bolas, who's a psychoanalyst, mm -hmm. calls the fascist state of mind. The in inability to tolerate disagreement. Mm -hmm. And I think Trump represents that, but more important than Trump himself are, is the fact that people yes. mm -hmm. support him and follow him. And so racism is on the rise, or at least it's more visible, um, misogyny, very big. The New mm -hmm. York Times, for the first time that I know of, used the word misogyny because of what's come out about Trump. So in, that's interesting mm -hmm. because then, it, in a way, then the New York Times becomes a public sphere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? It's supposed to be one anyway. It's supposed to be an institution mm -hmm. of the public sphere, but of course it's not really. But. Lately, it seems that certain topics are emerging and certain debates are emerging that are more public sphere-like. Yes. yes. Another point that you brought, extremely important, is because it's all the time this uh, preaching of neoliberal system of transparency, but you actually brought back the unconscious. 
Yes. This uh, moment that practically shows that this is a pure myth that is transparent, that the unconscious yes. is this traumatic space. Could you relate to this uh, notion? Yes. Well, also? increasingly, I think that the um, that psychoanalysis is a crucial discourse for understanding social events, the social mm -hmm. world, particularly war. Because, first of all, I believe that human mental life and its darkest aspects influence, mm -hmm. play a role in what's called the uh, reality, you know, social reality, which includes war uh, more and more, and, uh, great cruelty and barbarism and sexual torture, mm -hmm. and I think that the psychoanalysis is the only theory we have of cruelty. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. me, yes, of course the economic is important, mm -hmm. of course the ideological is important, especially as it's been elaborated by, you know, Al Jazeera and Absolutely, after. Absolutely, the, the French. Yeah, right, the and um, so, and the overtly political, all of these are important factors in war, mm -hmm. they've been given a lot of attention. But what hasn't been given that kind of attention is the um, psychic dimension, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly the destructive impulses that Freud was really, I'd say, the first to pinpoint mm -hmm. in the human. So. Um, I think that it, I think it's absolutely necessary. I don't think you can, I don't think we can have a less violent world without an acknowledgement of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. This is what um, an Italian psychoanalyst named Franco Funori yes. called taking responsibility for the unconscious. Mm -hmm. And that means, first of all, acknowledging that you have one. <laughs> yes, that we have one, and then that is actually erased in the time that we live. They are saying it's yes. everything transparent, uh, yes. positivistic, right. and so on. Yes, right, and it's not, of course. Absolutely. And so you have this unconscious, which is sort of you know, and I'm talking about the unconscious not in a liberatory sense, mm -hmm. the way let's say the surrealists did, yes, or that was we did as feminists mm -hmm. early on. Yes but also uh, particularly in the sense of dealing with aggression and uh, destructiveness, which I think as we more and more turn to violence and war, mm -hmm. and it's become, uh, the, I think it's called the sine qua non, you know, yes. the, it's necessary. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, obviously these factors in us are drawn on at historical moments. And I think this is one of those historical moments. It's very stressful. Another point that you brought, and it's interesting uh, and important, is the relation of the universal. This universalistic mm -hmm. talk also that uh, is implying in Habermas mm -hmm. of yes. the public space. And then you actually made a relation to uh, different gender, race, mm -hmm. uh, I will say class aspects. Yes. So how this uh, um, a relation actually what you were saying until now can be viewed. What we talk today, what is this? Well, I think there's different kinds of universality. There's different ways of thinking about universality. So the Habermasian way is to think that um, there's a kind of universal human reason and that we can all be united by this or by something substantive. Um, and that is a machine for expelling, excluding. Mm -hmm. Kluge and Neck yes. talked about this, I think, probably the best of any sure. of the critics of uh, Habermas, that it is, I forget, they don't call it mechanism, mm -hmm. a mechanism of exclusion. Uh, there's violence in the very notion, that very notion of universality. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there's another, I think, tell me what you think, yeah. uh, promise in the Enlightenment that's not based on this notion of universal reason, that has to do with justice and equality for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I can get behind that. 
Okay. That is a kind of universalism, and I think even Kant was involved in that. Though he was very racist. Yes, in some yes of, he was. Uh, yes. yes, and yeah. colonialist so and absolutely. everything. This absolutely. was the, 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 the unconscious right. of, of the idea. Well, but it was the yeah, times it's also. True. But my, my question will be then, just to come to a certain point, because we see uh, 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 the question of agency in this mm -hmm. what could be a public sphere. Mm -hmm. And a very uh, strong impact was uh, uh, done uh, in the last period uh, with uh, this tremendous, but also very powerful on the other part, also very um, discriminated position of the refugees oh. in the public space. In Europe, yes. that is actually a racist fortress. Yes. Uh, this is so... Uh, and in the U.S.? Yes, the same. The same. So Not as many people visible. It's true, but here it's... Uh, I mean, we talk about thousands yes. of people mm -hmm. that uh, are completely neglected. Oh, it's... So how you see, uh, in terms of what you also said, uh, to fight for democracy, for the public, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, uh, positions, these subjectivities to whom is not given the position of subjectivity? Yes. Yes. How, how we can relate? What is it that we have? What kind of agency? That we can have or that they can They have. can have and that we can actually learn, not in terms of victims, but really understand uh, if it's well, one yeah. way that people have talked about this, not in terms so much of today's situation, mm -hmm. but the idea of the foreigner or the stranger as um, the importance of the stranger to democracy, mm -hmm. insofar as the stranger um, is both outside but can also have a um, a clearer view mm -hmm. in some way. So that's one way, and maybe it's too romantic for the current situation. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know the answer except for people to continue trying to give those people a voice. To give uh, a voice, I mean, this has been a problem with immigration, which is mm -hmm. not always a refugee situation, but often is. Mm -hmm. And often what's called a migrant is really a refugee, okay. right? Um, fleeing from economic, po you know, from poverty, poverty. that's a refugee. Mm -hmm. I would consider that a refugee. But I think it, artists can make visible, or, you know, that's a very important um, act mm -hmm. these days. Raise consciousness, I suppose, and maybe work with refugees. I mean, this is something Krzysztof Wydyczko oh. has done, actually, so. in that um, piece that he does I forget the name of it now. Oh, uh, if if you see something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because this campaign in New York, if you see something, say something, is directed at uh, particularly Arabic-looking immigrants who, since 9/11, have been subject to enormous harassment and discrimination. So there are organizations that are mm -hmm. working with them, but artists, I think. Even though a certain anonymity has to be preserved, artists can do something that way. Mm -hmm. They could, I, I mean, they don't have to choose to work with refugees to make. Uh, if they can work yes. also on uh, uh, other topics that are touch, yes, touching and the I status think of so citizens, non citizens. And also the question of our own subjectivity. Yes, of course. Which I always, you know, I still think that the transformation of subjectivity is something that art. Mm -hmm. uh, can be involved in, and that that's why I don't think it has to be overtly about an explicitly political topic. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what we call political... What is actually today? Because it's also in transformation, what is the political, what is subjectivity? And I think yeah. that we should proliferate mm -hmm. political spaces rather than restrict totally. them. Yes. So I think there's many kinds of art can do many different kinds of things, but they can be part of a project, an emancipatory project. Okay, we just come to the last point because you also touched uh, very um, precisely, you said, I don't want to talk about public art. I talk maybe art in the city. Um, uh, these uh, uh, questions uh, are uh, interesting because uh, of uh, this division and also what could be art in the city or if you have some examples. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't like public art, obviously, um, for the reasons I gave, that it implies that art in the city is automatically somehow 
um, the democratic, which I don't think is the case because I don't think the city is democratic. So, you know, and mm -hmm. there it is and it isn't, you know, it's many things. Um, I think that public, so I don't use public art, which is a big problem because it's hard, you know, it's very ungainly. So mm -hmm. I'm, I teach a course called the Discourse of Public Art and Public Space. So I distance myself from it. Say there's a particular discourse about public art that mm -hmm. I have, I'm very critical of and why. Um, so when I took, when even to say that public art is art in the city, is to define public art according to location. Mm -hmm. And I want to define public art or art's publicness or capacity mm -hmm. to be public or to promote a public sphere as the performance of an operation. Mm -hmm. And the operation is uh, producing a public sphere yes. in one mm -hmm. way or another. So. Um, to say art in the city is to presume that a public space already exists, mm -hmm. when in fact that's exactly what's in danger. Absolutely. Right. And those... Yes. Yeah. So some of the, exa I mean, obviously the mm -hmm. artist I've written about a lot is Christopher Ditchko, mm -hmm. but I also write a lot about institutional critique and mm -hmm. artists, they're not working in the city, except that museums are in the city too, mm -hmm. so I don't like all those divisions. I don't think that I don't like the public private division. Yes, that I it think should not be rigid. It's too also restrictive. There's no Absolutely. Uh, it's necessary really for a to lot expand. of reasons. Yes. So then you're leaving excluding things from public space mm -hmm. and um, I think that good institution critical art is making a public space in the institution. I think it's transforming the institution from within. Um, but if you want to take it out of the realm of art if you think about um, Occupy Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Occupy Wall Street, they camped out in a so-called public space. Mm -hmm. It's owned by a private company and they got that space. They had to provide that mm -hmm. space in order to get extra uh, what's called floor area density, so mm -hmm. to make more profits, right? So. They camped out in this public space, which should be actually okay, uh, but it's really a private public space. So what all I'm trying to get at is that Occupy Wall Street made it a, a public space in the sense of a public mm -hmm. sphere. They took it back from being appropriated. And it doesn't have to be a private company that appropriates. It can be a, a government, yes. right? Or as Michelle de Certeau says, mm -hmm. and or Lefebvre, any time you attribute a proper use mm -hmm. to a space and say that that use is dictated by some objective or natural source, that's privatizing mm -hmm. it. Good. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome. You.